answer. In question 7, we are given a particle of mass m and a particle q of mass 5m. The particles are moving in the same direction. We are given that immediately before the collision, the speed of p is 6u and that of q is u. And after the collision, the speed of p is x and that of, y is, that of q is y. We are given the coefficient of restitution is e and the detail that the direction of motion of p is reversed as a result of the collision. We have to find the complete range of the possible values of e in part a. So this is the diagram we have. We can use the conservation law of momentum and the law of restitution. So applying conservation of momentum we get this equation and uh, by applying Newton's law of restitution this formula over here. Now if we work with the conservation of momentum the m's cancel out on the left and right we are left with this equation so 5y minus x is 11u we can make we can make x the subject of this we'll get x equals to 5y minus 11u now if we work with this equation over here newton's law of restitution we get e to be x plus y divided by 6u minus u we can replace the x with this so we'll get uh, e to be 6y minus 11u by 5u now we can send this over here we get 5u equals to 6y minus 11u and then we can make y the subject now from this equation we know that x must be greater than 0 so for the direction to reverse x must be greater than 0 so if x is greater than 0 5y minus 11u will be greater than 0 we can make y the subject here and we get y is greater than 11 by 5u we can put it over here so we'll get 5u plus 11u by 6 greater than 11 by 5u we can multiply the 6 on the right so we'll get 5u plus 11u greater than 13.2u then we can move the 11u to the left get 5u equals greater than 2.2u and then we can divide both sides with 5u and get e greater than 0.44 this is not the complete range we also know that the value of e must be between 0 and 1 inclusive so this is our answer to part a now in part b we are given that the value of the coefficient of restitution for this collision is 3 by 5 so we'll work with that we'll place that in the equation of y we'll get y to be 7 by 3u we put it in this equation now we can find the value of x we know that x is 5 by minus 11u so 5 times 7 by 3u minus 11u we'll get x is 2 by 3u now the change in kinetic energy would be the initial kinetic energy so for particle p this would be half into m into 6u whole square for particle q the initial uh, um, kinetic energy was half into 5m into u square and now we'll subtract the final kinetic energy so this is half into m into 2 by 3 u square for particle p and for particle p q it's half times 5m times 7 by 3 u whole square we'll get 41 by 2 mu square the initial kinetic energy minus 83 by 6 mu square the final kinetic energy so the change in kinetic energy would be 20 by 3 mu square now in question c we are told that after the collision q hits a smooth fixed vertical wall that is perpendicular to its direction of motion and it rebounds and the coefficient of restitution in this is f now given that there is another collision so given that there is a second collision between p and q we have to find the complete range of possible values of f the coefficient of restitution between q and the wall so this is our diagram right now q is moving towards the wall at a velocity of 7 by 3u 
particle P is moving away at 2 by 3 u. So the collision happens with a coefficient of restitution of f. After that particle Q moves at velocity v to the left. So we use Newton's law of restitution here. F would be v, the speed of separation by the speed of approach which is 7 by 3 u. So we get v equals to 7 by 3 u f. Now for a further collision, for a second collision between Q and P, Q has to catch up to P. So the speed of Q here, so V, must be greater than 2 by 3 U. So we put it over here, so V is equal to 7 by 3 U F, so we put it that, we substitute that for V, we get 7 by 3 U F to be greater than 2 by 3 U, that uh, 1 by 3 U cancel out. We are left with uh, f greater than uh, 2 by 7. Now that's not complete. We also have the upper limit which is f less than equals to 1. So this is the complete range.